because I'm really bummed out. I am really bummed out. I stopped this morning on my way into work at McDonald's for one of those quickie breakfasts. And I got my Egg McMuffin and my little carton of milk. And I noticed a little yellow slip inside of my bag. And I figured, well, what are they trying to, you know, hustle on me now? So I dipped into the bag. I pulled it out. And it says, can you fill our order? We need friendly, fast-paced men and women who enjoy working as a team. Now hiring part-time crew people for day and closing shifts. Apply at McDonald's. 7480 Starkey Road in Seminole. And you suppose they knew who I was? Are they trying to tell me? Should I consider this? Oh, you know, David Capon's after me. Other people are after me. Maybe it's what it's going to come down to. Twelve minutes after the hour of 12 noon. <laughs> this afternoon should Lassiter accept McDonald's kind invitation to work part-time in their Starkey Road store in Seminole. Welcome aboard Thursday, November the 5th, 1987. I am indeed Bob Lassiter with you until four or until I decide to take McDonald's up on their kind offer, whichever comes first. Right here at the talk of Tampa Bay, WFLA. An entirely open program. No guests, no grief, no nothing this afternoon. Primarily you. Obviously, talk radio is, is best when you're picking on somebody. And so I was sitting around today saying, you know, who should we pick on? And, oh, you know, the usual people came up. And I thought, well, oh, I don't know. You know, brain damage, snowbirds, old people, young people, people from the north, people from the south. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And then I thought about fat women who wear sleeveless blouses. Now, there is something that we could possibly spend an entire program on because obviously there is nothing worse than a fat woman with a sleeveless blouse. But then, of course, there is no Q10 jive out there trying to revive the stupid little yellow signs in the back windows of cars, Dick. And there are people like, uh, well, Allen Ginsberg. I mean, who in the hell in his right mind would support Allen Ginsberg for the Supreme Court? His poetry was lousy. He's got that weird hair. Yeah, sure, I know they cleaned up his act a little bit. But Allen Ginsberg on the Supreme Court, give me a break. And perhaps we might pick on anybody who drinks beer. It's a vile beverage. All it does is make people burp. Anybody who drinks beer deserves to be picked on. The Jehovah Witnesses. Ah, hey, there's one for you. Nobody really likes them. Many of them are fat ladies in sleeveless dresses, too. There's Santa Claus. We haven't picked on Santa Claus in a long, long, long time. Ah, sure, yeah, I know Santa used to be my best buddy. He used to stop by every year, leave me a couple of presents, take my milk and cookies, and, and be gone. I mean, I even have pictures with, my, with myself and Santa. I have pictures. He was my buddy. He used to let me pull his beard. And, and where the hell has he been of late? I haven't seen the guy for about 35 years. 35 years! He's still out there. Ho, 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 ho. You know, I'm getting a little... You know, th this guy's a little bit suspect as it is. Nobody goes, ho, 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 ho. Nobody. It's a phony laugh. Makes you wonder about the whole thing, doesn't it? You know, Santa, we, we, we could pick on Santa today. Michael Levine. Hey, there's a great person to pick on. He's not here to defend himself. I do not understand why the people of Tampa Bay will not support the orchestra. Yeah, we could pick on Michael Levine. Gail Searins. Now, there's nothing wrong with Gail Searins, but we've never picked on her before, and a hell of a lot of people are really jealous. We can pick on anybody who does a talk show in this market or any other market. I don't care. I mean, and other than that, it's going to be open moaning and groaning. Now, there is another possibility or two. We are frequently being criticized. Can you imagine being criticized? for being too negative, that we don't say nice things about people. So I thought that maybe, maybe today, we might consider saying nice things about um, Pat Robertson, the whoremonger. Yeah, we can say nice things about Pat Robertson. Or Joe Redner. Let's say nice things about Joe Redner. 
Nobody ever does the show saying nice things about Joe, and he's brought he's brought so much happiness to so many people, you know? The man has shown us things that we never thought we'd ever see. And perhaps we could we could do that. Then there is another possibility, too. We could turn it into stupid caller day. No, not not put on stupid calls, legitimate stupid calls. We might even offer a present, uh, a prize of some kind. I'm sure that we have a pass to a Sonny's barbecue pit or something like that. If you are selected the most stupid caller of the day, just be sure to identify yourself to the producer as you call in. The nimble-fingered Brad James. Tell him that you are a stupid caller and that you're after the uh, stupid caller of the day prize. And he'll put a little asterisk or something like that up on the screen so we will know. And then, of course, there is... Nah, nah. These are the possibilities, and if you don't like any of them, there is, of course, always open moaning and groaning about anything that your little heart desires. Huh? What? What, what do you people want from me? Good grief. I'm going to give you the phone numbers again. I'm giving you a list of topics like you can't believe. What is the matter with the people of Tampa Bay? I do not understand what is the matter with the people of Tampa Bay. Why they don't support the ship? Whatever. Chris in Tampa, hi, you're on the air, WFLA. I am tired of these people coming down from up north and stealing our jobs at McDonald's. Tired of the people coming down from up north and stealing our jobs at McDonald's. Well, McDonald's offered me a job this morning. I don't know if they knew for sure who I was. I kind of suspect maybe they did. Well, I didn't know about it. I would have been there. Yeah, well, yes, it's the one at 7480 Starkey Road in Seminole. I heard they're... Offered me a part-time job. I heard they're paying pretty good now on the retirement benefits and everything are pretty good. Well, it doesn't say how much they're paying. It just says that they need, uh, what is it... Friendly, fast-paced men and women who enjoy working as a team. Wow. I'm neither friendly nor am I fast-paced, nor do I enjoy working on a team. You know, I, uh, so what the hell they're trying to hire me for is beyond me, but nonetheless, they tried. And we get my friends together. We all go down there as a team and I hire us all. I mean... Well, it's a possibility. Yeah, it might work out. And uh, another thing. Yeah. Uh, about these fat women. Yeah, ho, ho. And the sleeveless blouses. Yeah, I just... That's the same ones that... that don't wear, don't wear any hose in the, in, the, in the little sneakers and stuff. Could well be. It could well be the same individual. Yeah. And, you know, seems like no matter how, how much they wash themselves, it's just, I don't know, I can't handle it. Well, they've got all those cracks and crevices and, you know, places for bacteria to hide. I can't handle it. Oh, it's grim, grim, really grim. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I said. And then, um, after listening to the show the other day about the evils of rock and roll, I went to the Pink Floyd concert, and then I got out all my albums, and I sat around all day, and I listened to them. And I went out, and I'll tell you what happened when I got finished. I got in a real strange mood. Hey, be careful. It could be small children listening, and obviously and if you spent all day I'll listening to Pink Floyd. There's, there's yeah. no sex here. It's just gore and mutilation. What, no sex after listening to Pink Floyd? No, I got up, and I got in a strange Wait, mood, the, and I went to my the refrigerator, and I got a chicken. And I yeah. got it out, and I chopped it into pieces, Ooh. and then to make it even better, I put it in a pan of hot oil, and then oh. I ate it. Oh! And oh, I, I gross! That's what Pink Floyd and Black Sabbath did to me, Bob. Gross, gross, gross! It was. It, 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 was, it was wild, and you know, when I got done, I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said, my goodness, what have you done? And I couldn't live with myself for at least two days, so I had to go live with somebody else. Oh, I heard, I heard a story almost as bad yesterday. A, a friend of mine attended a Peter Duchin concert mm -hmm. and uh, came back and ate quiche Lorraine. Oh, my goodness. The next thing you know, he's probably going to buy a Beamer and move to Carrollwood. Could well be. All right, Bob. Bill in town and country. Hi, Bill. You're on the air. Hey, yeah, Mr. Lasseter. I just want to try and cheer you up a little bit. You think you feel bummed out about your McDonald's caper? I was just going through my mail, and I got this thing from the Fleming Institute. For a magazine, Sex Over 40. And it's it's crazy. Are you serious? Oh, this is great. <laughs> and it's, it's a, I got a six-page letter plus enclosures, and it's got things like, now that you're over 40 and you have trouble getting an erection, and sex is not fun for you, and you realize all the things you missed in your 20s and 30s, get the, subscribe to our magazine and get a free book, 27 Most Frequently Asked Questions About Sex After 40. I can't believe this. And it's the 27 most frequently asked questions about sex. I mean, how many... I didn't realize there were 27 different ways to say, please, 
queen. <laughs> well, that's, I, I, evidently I'm missing something. I'm over 40, and yeah, everything's going pretty good for me. But, um, well, I, God, now I'm really afraid to go home. But, you know, suppose there is a solicitation like that in my mailbox when I go home this afternoon, and you know, in one day being offered part-time work at McDonald's plus. And plus, you get this. Oh, that could really be grim. Well, you know, she seems relatively happy. 27 most frequently asked questions about sex over 40. Yeah, if you buy the book, or buy the uh, magazine. How, how much is the magazine? 36 bucks a year. $36 a year? Yeah, yeah. Man, this is it's depressing. I mean, if you shopped right, you know, out along Dale Mabry, you could get a lot of sex for $36 a year. All you get out of a book is reading. Yeah, you'd probably get change back on Dale Mabry, too. Oh, lots of change. Yeah, it, it, this is it's really depressing. I wish you could read this letter. I hope, I hope you get one, just so you can read Oh, it. thanks a lot, though. Well, no, thanks I don't a lot, you I mean, just, just... Offered a job at McDonald's, and you want me... Oh, hey. <laughs> anyway, I thought that might just make you feel a little bit better to know that I got this in the mail. You got a job offer from McDonald's. I'd a rather, bad I'd... day, man. I, my, my wife said to me this morning, let's not go into work. Let's stay home, just go back to bed, pull down the shutters, and sleep all day. Mm -hmm. I should have listened to her. Thank you. Uh, Texan, Bomb Harbor. Hi, Tex. You're on the air at WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon, Tex. <laughs> My hope you don't have another sad tale of woe like the last caller. <laughs> no, I, I uh, hesitate. So to speak, a sad tale of woe. I hesitate to get all serious on you, but I, I wanted to bring up uh, the subject of the the group Females for Felons. Uh, it is a group started by a doctor, I believe his name is... Sir. Females for Felons? Yes, sir. This is a group that provides... Uh, Let's call it, for the sake of radio, female companionship for those of our uh, uh, population that are incarcerated. Uh-huh. And I thought that the concept was uh, you do realize, least outrageous. You, you do realize it's a joke, don't you, Tex? Uh, no, sir. I caught the last half of the Morton Downey Jr. show on TV last night. And uh, this gentleman, Mr. Sturgis, Dr. Sturgis, rather, was... Um, uh, Tex? Yes, sir, please. Uh, Dr. Sturgis uh, is the type of man who goofs on talk show hosts. It's a joke. I swear to you. You mean to tell me that now I don't have to have my bowels all in an uproar over this subject? Because, <laughs> no, to tell don't. you the truth, I was getting a little bit outraged. Well, you see, Tex, there are an awful lot of people who do talk shows who are desperate, starved for guests. And uh, they, they will put people on without any real thought as to what they're saying or what they're pushing or anything else. And it's a, it's a gag. Should, should there or should there not be some sort of a disclaimer then um, the, during the running of the credits on this show? I dare say that there's a very strong possibility that the gentleman who was running the show didn't know it. That he was bamboozled too now bob you wouldn't be bamboozling no i wouldn't no i wouldn't okay well uh, do you have it on good authority that this dr sturgis is indeed a fake individual and this female for felons organization is also bogus well let me let me put it to you this way tex i can't say for sure that doc the name sturgis is the name used by the man that i know is doing this as a spoof Yes. But I do know there is somebody out there doing it as as a spoof. Well, this is With the exact same concept, uh, women volunteering their services for felons in prison to keep them from being so testy, <laughs> so to speak. Well, I must say, this makes for excellent talk show fodder. This gentleman, well, in most markets it does. This gentleman was, was quite um, resplendent, bedecked in his uh, hood with holes for the eyes, nose, and mouth. According to uh, his testimony, he is under the Federal Witness Protection Act, and uh, he had a couple of. Uh, Tex, uh, I might also point out that yards. I might also point out that one of my colleagues in this market has had the man on yeah. within the last 90 days. I see. That's how I know. Well, Bob, then I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and take your word for it, and I guarantee you, I am going to have a much more pleasant afternoon now that I don't have to think about this garbage. Hey. You you don't have to go out and hold up the gas station either and be put in prison. Let me tell you something else that I don't have to do for right now is worry about sex over 40. Okay. <laughs> bye, buddy. Bye-bye, Tex. A lot of... Back to the phones with 
would go bad taste. And yeah, exactly, bad taste. Now, now, granted, I'm perhaps 10, 15 pounds overweight, maybe 12. I don't know. It was something in between there. But at least I don't wear sleeveless shirts. Well, I don't consider that really being overweight. The no. person I'm talking about stands about... Do my about, best to cover it up. She stands about 5 feet 2 and weighs 200 pounds. Oh, now, gross. Now, that's overweight. Gross, gross, gross. That is overweight. But at any event, I did find something for the lady, and I gave it to her, and she was pickled pink and ward and... You know. uh, what was it, a pup tent? <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Just about. They come in nice muted shades, you know, olive, drab olive green and brown. Nice, nice earth tones. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking something in a classic, maybe a, a navy blue with a with a vertical uh, uh, style to the dress. You know, something that would, would tend to be slenderizing. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. So it was nice chatting. That's Should all. Have given her a for. muzzle if you wanted to, you know, give her something that was slenderizing. <laughs> all right. Yeah, oh, it could happen in Orlando. Uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. You know, where they. And so, so now I'm I'm terrified to go out of the house. And, fear for my life in case I run into one of these people again. Do you have any advice for me? Well, does she have pictures with her? Pardon? Does she have pictures? No, no pictures. No thank pictures? God. No, no. She might not have been a brain damaged snowbird because they almost always carry pictures. <laughs> you know, at least in the back seat anyway. Now, well, let me go to the back seat and get the album. I can show you the pictures. <laughs> That's where I was when he was four. And that was his first day at school. Well, advice, you know, obviously stay away from Orlando. Question. Sure. Who are the original members of the Eagles? Oh, God, I would have no idea. But you used to play them. I know, I have many Eagles albums, but you see, you must understand that um, even when I worked in that end of the business, and I worked in that end of the business for many, many years, uh, my mind just doesn't work that way. It, it is not filled with that kind of trivia. My mind is filled with trivia, make no mistake about it. But not that kind. Uh, I mean, I have favorite songs. I have favorite... Oh, let me give you an example. Okay. My wife has a T-shirt. And the T-shirt says, Joe Walsh for President 1984. Right. Okay? Right. She got this T-shirt when she worked at a radio station in uh, uh, Davenport, Iowa. Mm -hmm. I saw it and just assumed, you know, Joe Walsh must be a local rock guy. Yeah. I have at least a half dozen Joe Walsh favorite songs, and I never knew the man's name. I see. Well, I worked in that into the business, Mike, for over ten years. Yeah. Obviously, I couldn't ask you anything about Woodstock then. Well, you could ask. I had some very basic rock and roll trivia questions here. I wasn't going to lay anything really hard on you. Like, for example, when was Woodstock? Do you remember? Well, I'd have to... Uh... I'd have to put this chronologically, it was probably 68. That's close. 1969 in August. 69, okay. Yeah, I'm going to, just last thing here, Bob, and then I'm going to let you go back to some of these more superlative callers. Uh, the first gold record was a single, and it was certified by the Record Industry Association of America in 19... 58, I think. It was done by Perry Como. I, uh, if you were going to ask me who, my two guesses would have been Patty Page or Perry Como. Yeah. And that is, is for real. That's what After I would have guessed. Falling Star. Remember that song? Oh, sure. That was the first gold Falling record. Falling Star and put it in your pocket and never let it fade away. That was the first gold record. Knock him dead, Bob. Huh? You want to hear it? Sure, why not? I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> Especially in the non-hour. All right. Uh, there was this elephant and the pita for that were in our jungles in Africa, and the one that could catch the lion first was the one that could eat it, and uh, the pita for ate it. You want to ask me something? Uh, what's uh, what what? Oh God, I wish Webb would uh, feel so much more comfortable. What's what's the pita for? Don't you know? No, I don't. Oh, Bob. One of the great problems. That's why I've had nine wives, Terry. Nine I've gone through so far. What? I've gone through nine wives. <laughs> you don't know what a Peter's for? That's why I've been through nine wives. <laughs> you're going to send me a ticket for... You're going to send me a... Thanks for a Sunday barbecue? I don't know that I have any, but if your call is judged the most stupid of the entire day, then you will indeed get something. I'm not, not going to uh, know. Uh, would you believe it? Just, what? just the mere mention of the word, the man comes running down the hall. He's taking notes. Is that what you're going to do your whole show today on web? Well, I tell you, I get some great show leads from listening to you. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't even in the building when this call started. I just walked in. What's going on? 
<laughs> What's going on? You hear the word Peter and Bam, you're in the studio. No, I didn't. I didn't hear anything. I was. I said, he's not Peter Bam, it's Peter Four. This woman was telling me a joke, and the uh -huh. punchline of the joke is Peter for, and your other person's supposed to say, well, what's a Peter for? <laughs> and then you say, you don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. And of course, it figures you would walk in immediately. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> well, so I just happened to drift in. Well, guess what the web show's going to be on. Thanks a lot, Terry. Thank, you, right. for, thank you for the lead, Terry. Bye-bye. Well, you can leave now. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be doing that kind of a show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not me. Leave that up to you. Call in. I've taken a survey over the last 20 years. Women who are about 20 pounds overweight are definitely better in bed. 20 pounds overweight yeah. are definitely better in bed? Definitely. It's scientifically proven. Scientifically uh, proven? I'll, I'll be publishing the results soon. Well, uh, how, how is this scientifically proven? Uh, the, 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 uh, I use the scientific method. The experiment can be repeated. <laughs> well, well what, what, what constitutes better? In bed. Better than, uh, better than? Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess uh, heavier uh, breathing and starlight and things like that. You heavier know, breathing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's harder for them to move until they get out of breath. That's right. <laughs> and it's, I, do you realize I frequently weep after the show? I frequently weep. I, I'm, I'm led down the hall crying my little eyes out because I've, I've had to be rude to somebody all in in the name of ratings. And I'm sure there's some fat women out there wearing bikinis that are too small that would just love to have one of those moist autographed handkerchiefs that you use. Probably. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and one thing that just irritates me that I'd probably just finish up with is I get a little tired of never being able to find a pair of shoes that fits both feet at the same time. Really? What kind of weird feet do you have, Jay? Just enough. Man, I've never run into that problem. You've never had. You've never gone into a store and found one shoe that fit a little better than the other. Well, actually, yes. I wear a ten and a half, but I always buy eleven. Because one shoe always seems a little bit too tight. Yep. And nobody will ever let you take the other one out of another box to find out if that one fits a little better, because they keep telling you the numbers won't match the box anymore. And the problem is, you know, of course, when you buy a shoe that's too big, is after a week or so, you know, you start to look like an elf. Yeah. The and one is too loose, and the other one's still too tight. It's always the one that's too loose that stretches better. Life is full of disappointment. <laughs> full of them. They call and tell you that uh, my beef about fat women, uh, especially the ones that have the sleeveless browsers and then they have hair under their arms. Oh, oh, gross. And then with the perspiration stains all over, too. Well, the perspiration stains are bad, but what about, you know, when you can actually see it running down? Oh, yeah, no, it then Drops on the too. floor, the, you know, puddles in the restaurant. Oh, gross. And then you see the lines around their behinds when they wear the too tight pants, too. Oh, now you're really talking. Now you are really, really talking. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, another thing about the shoe that won't fit, uh, it's a known fact that one foot is larger than the other foot. That's why you uh, Dave in Palmetto. Hi, Dave. You're on the air. Hey, Bob. This is Dave. I'm calling from Palmetto. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this friend of mine is actually beaming your transmission back to the planet. You're kidding. No, Bob. I'm not. How long have you known Jacob? No, not talking about Jacob. Oh. His name's Fillmore. Fillmore, uh huh. Mm hmm. And he's from the planet Ohm. Ohm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they just love you up there, Bob. They're the greatest thing that they've had, Bob. Yeah, but, it, yeah, it, yeah, you see, pro the, the problem is, Dave, they don't take ratings in Ohm. Yeah, I know. That, that, that's know. why I normally ignore all of my Ohm fans. Yeah, but, you know, that's why I'm calling in. To let you know that they are there. And they love you, Bob. We have, though, considered sending a salesperson up to Ohm. Oh, they don't believe you know, Even though we can't get, you know, ratings up there, maybe we could at least pick up a couple of clients. They don't believe in material objects on the time. Would you like to talk to someone? Uh, sure. Sure. Okay, here it is. Hello, Bob. Uh, hello, Fillmore. Hello, Dr. Bob. I uh, beg your pardon? How are you? How am I? I'm fine, Fillmore. Yourself? Hi, uh hi. Great. I look like about Walter. You're, you're, you're just about what, Fillmore? I'm having a very difficult time understanding you. I want to talk about welfare. You want to talk about welfare? No, thank you. Oh, okay. I don't know how to talk about welfare. Uh, the problem is, the problem is, Fillmore, that, uh, 
We, can, we can't understand a word that you're saying. I'm sorry. Is that better? Uh, no, it isn't really better. I'm doing fine. That's what I heard you just talked to my husband. Oh, my God. You don't mean Paul. I sure do. Oh, Becky. That's what I said was, oh, my God, you don't mean Paul. Oh, Becky. Did you know about this? Not till just now. But I'm glad it's with fat women at least. What? I guess. Well, what, what are you going to do, Becky? Throw the scoundrel out? I don't know. What would you do? I'd throw him out. You'd throw him out? I'd throw him out and I'd, um... Oh, uh, take all of his clothes, rip them into shreds, perhaps dip them in red dye. Red, no, 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 not Le red dye. Not red dye? Why not? Something worse. Something worse? Oh, 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 Do you have a cattle prod? No, but I have a pair of dull, rusty scissors. Sounds good to me, Becky. Do you think so? Yes. Oh, okay. But I, I've often heard that, you know, you can learn an awful lot from listening to talk radio, but sometimes what you learn is a little painful. Well, but it's been going on for years. But that's true, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's really been going on for years. We haven't been married for that many years. I mean, does, does, does he go out a lot? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Does, does, does he go out a lot? I mean, does he say he goes bowling and things like that? Uh, he used to. We know, Becky, there is another possibility here. He might be married to an old blowhard. You know, you know, <laughs> you know who still has a seventh grade locker room mentality that makes things up. That's I don't a possibility. know. I don't know, but he's going to be well chaperoned from now on. So I'd put a leash on him. Ah, uh, that's true. And I would consider the cattle prod, too. The cattle prod? I don't even know where to go about getting one of those. Well, probably any good feed store uh, could help you with that. A feed store? A That's feed what he store. needs to go to to feed his fat women, too. Well, probably. No, oh, I can't believe that. That is allowed. Try so hard to keep in shape for somebody, and then look, and he tells you yeah. he like fat yeah. women instead. I, yeah. can't, I can't believe it, of all the nerve. I mean, I just had a baby for Pete's sake. Oh, for Pete's sake? For somebody's sake. Wait a second, I thought you were married to Paul. Where, where does Pete come in on this? Well, that's just an expression. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure, Becky. How long have uh, you been fooling around with this guy, Pete? I haven't been fooling around with Pete. You haven't been fooling around with Pete? Not with Pete. Well, then why'd you have his baby? I didn't have Pete's baby. Well, that's what you said, Becky. No, no, no. I said back for and you said, Pete's sake. Right. I just had a baby <laughs> for Pete's sake. That's true. Well, for Pete's sake, it was Paul's baby, but Pete. For Pete's sake. Oh, yeah, sure. Now, and Paul's supposed to believe this. Oh, well, this is Pete wasn't terrible. Fat. Then Pete wasn't fat. Ah, so there is a Pete. Well, I didn't say that. I just said Holding Pete's out on fat. it. Huh? Holding out on it. One of these modern marriages. You fooling around with Pete, and old Paul's out there fooling around with the bimbos. The bimbos, that's it. Paul loves bimbos. That, that much I can, I can attest to. You can? Yes. Well, how can you possibly attest to that? Are you, are you saying because now that you're a bimbo? As you walk down the mall and you see what makes his head turn, you know what a bimbo is. Or a fawn. You're kidding. Oh, no. No. He has the audacity to go to the mall with you and oogle women? So why not? What kind of women does he oogle? Bimbos. Bimbos. Not fat ones in shorts with stripes. Oh, you know, too much makeup, frizzy hair, that kind of stuff? Um, usually blonde hair. Bleached, of course. Well, what else? Yeah. What else? Oh, Becky, this is heartbreaking. Well, I'll live. Heartbreaking. I'll live. I'll live. I will get my child support. From Pete? No, no, no. From Paul? Oh, yes. Becky, what kind of woman are you? You've got Pete's kid, but you want Paul to pay for it? Why not? Paul's got the good job. He does? Well, well of course. 
What kind of good job can he have? I mean, no, he's got I'm not time telling to... you what kind of job well, he has. Well, no, no, no I, I didn't really mean it that way, but <laughs> my, my point is he's got time to call up talk radio shows and talk about his extramarital affairs. Well, maybe it was on his lunch break. Who knows? The affairs? That, too. Cut his lunch money in half. Give him 50 cents for lunch. I pack him his lunch. Well, Don't I... even give him any money. Well, and make sure you're packing bad lunches. You know, maybe won't be able to take the van anymore. Probably, I'd give him 50 cents because probably what is happening, Becky, is you're packing him these big, delicious lunches. He's going out looking for fat women, knowing how much they like to eat, and he's swapping these lunches that you're giving him for sex. How That's come you're, the how answer. How come you're such an expert? Well, it's, it's just becoming painfully obvious. You think so, huh? Yes. I don't know. You're packing these great lunches. He goes to the mall. Looks at these women standing there in front of, you know, the, the cookie counter, drooling. Says, hey, babe. With, with opens up the brown, fun. Yeah, opens up the brown satchel, shows them all the... Does he have a van? Yes, he does. Right, then he takes them out in the parking lot in the van, gives them your lunch, and... Oh, jeez. But, you know, you're out there fooling around with Pete anyways. I don't feel sorry for either of you. I'm not really fooling around with Pete, and this really is a serious subject. Well, of course it's a serious subject. Oh, I mean, no. Pete's baby. No, it's not Pete's baby. It isn't Pete's baby. No, it's not. You're sure? I'm absolutely 100% positive. Pete wore protection. Huh? Pete had protection on, so to speak. Yeah. No, 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 no. Where's your decency lady? The decency lady? I don't know. She's probably driving frantically in her Nash Rambler to get here to the station. <laughs> Becky, I've got to run, but I thank you very much. I hope it all works out. Well, I'll call you and let you know. Please do. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. One twenty. Oh, Well, you're talking about that show I did when I asked the audience if they liked large peanut butter jars or small peanut butter jars. Has it made any difference to them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and, you know, jacking up cars and, uh, and all the other things. Please, careful of the language there, Harry. Huh? Careful of the language there. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, I am, yeah. Uh, but I just wanted the old guy to know uh, that the reason the police couldn't get to his house on his uh, call is because it was you... Well, he didn't. He, he didn't say that he actually ever called them. He just assumed if he did, it would take them that long to get there. Mm -hmm. I, I love your stadium punch. I can just see a stadium. Uh, right in Val Rico. Val Rico. Val Rico Dome. <laughs> you might have that exactly. Yeah, right. unless they're getting free blood pressure tests or something, <laughs> then St. Petersburg would probably draw better. <laughs> Bob, your shoppers are razor day. Thank but you, I Harry. Jonesboro, let us go to St. Petersburg and talk to Tom. Well, let us not if you're going to be that way, Tom. You're kidding on line one. Holy cow, Pete. Hello there. Uh, hi, Pete. How are you doing? I'm fine, you rascal. Ah, definitely. The reason why I was fooling around with Becky because she was so plump. No, 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 no. Becky keeps herself in shape. You've got to keep up with the call, nice Pete. Nice pubic hair. Becky is Becky is the, the the thin wife of the guy that likes the fat women. Well, that that that's not necessarily true. I mean, you know, the... what she's lying to us about keeping in shape? Yes, she isn't. She isn't that thin. Well, she was pregnant for God's sake. That's not no? fat. That's that's a baby growing inside of her. No, it's not fat. No, I know. I, I'm not saying about about uh, about the baby, but be, before she had the baby, you know, she wasn't. Uh, Does that, the baby that... look like you? Mm, no, nah, not really. She had, she had some of the most beautiful pubic hair in the world. The baby? No, Becky. 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 I, I fool around with Becky, not the baby. I know that you're not fooling around. Oh, this is very, very confusing. <laughs> we understand that you're not fooling around with a baby. Nobody's, you know, accusing you of that yet. Although <laughs> oh, the way geez, this show is that, going, you know, uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Well, how long have you been fooling around with other men's wives, Pete? About six months. That is a... 
About six months. You mean yeah. the baby was premature? Yeah. Well, it would have to be. Yeah. Well, the baby's already been born. She no, had the I, baby I had for before, peace. Before that, I, it, was, it was six months. Oh, I see. You've been fooling around with other men's wives besides right. Paul's wife, Becky. Right. That's, yeah. that's a despicable thing to do. No, fooling around isn't. with other people's it's wives. It's healthy. It might be healthy. <laughs> Yeah, you'll find out how healthy it is when you get caught. The more, the merrier. I haven't gotten caught yet. Yeah, that's what they all say until they get caught. You know, this guy Paul sounds to me like a pretty serious dude. <laughs> but, but if he's able to, you know, pick up and throw around these heavyweight bimbos, just think what he can do with you. Well, I'm, I'm no, uh... uh He'll hit you with his would, lunch pail. not throw me around like a, a bimbo. Yeah, but he could probably hit I'm you with his lunch pail. He's got all those big lunches that Becky's been packing for him. Uh -huh. He could do you some serious damage with that lunch pail, man. Well, I don't, I don't think uh, she would uh, she would mind. I don't think uh, he would. He doesn't uh, particularly care for her all that much. You're kidding. No. It sounded to me like he did. You know, he just had this... this, this Human yeah, weakness you know, for he, overweight he women. His, if he calls his wife plump and fat... No, he uh, didn't call his wife. Women. No, no, no. He said his wife wasn't plump. Well, he, you know, he's 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 always complaining. You know, I I had heard this, you know, plenty of times from the guy. You know. You know him? Yes. You fool around with a friend's wife? Definitely. You're a despicable character. Well, you're scum. No, I'm not. Oh, how could you fool around with your best buddy's wife? It's very easy. Are you implying now that Becky is a loose woman? No, no, no. It's very no. easy to fool around Becky. Becky didn't sound like that to me. It sounded to me like there was real love involved here, not just not just some kind of a a, a careless, carefree affair. Well, it... And it, you've uh, been toying with this woman's emotions? Well, I, I've dropped out of sight so that, you know, she hasn't been able to... Uh, Catch up with me in a little while. Oh, sure. Now the baby's come along and you split, you cad. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, you're a cad, yeah, a you know, worthless you know, cad. Say, love him and leave him. Oh, get off my phone. I can't stand this anymore. Oh, we're on the air at WFLA. Hello, this is Becky's obstetrician. Oh, no. Yes, tell her husband and Pete just forget it. The baby's Chinese, Bob. You're kidding. Yeah, just a uh, little slanty eyed wonder. He's a uh, real friendly little guy. I don't know who Peggy's, she's, uh, who she's hanging out with, and they're off time, but it's not either of those two. I, it, maybe it's just a coincidence, but on line eight, I have a guy named Lee Wong that wanted to uh, get in on the conversation. That must be it. Oh, okay, but personally, <laughs> really, um, I just really wanted to call and tell you that I'm wise to your game, Bob. You're wise to my game. Which yes. game? Your game that you're running on the uh, management there today when you uh, said you got a job offer from McDonald's. Now, I it's think... true. It's true. It's a little slip of paper they put in my bag. It's right here. See? Yeah, really. I think you had to print it up or something. So that's uh, what you I know you guys are not ready to operate. You're using this as leverage to get a little bit more over at work. You know, the management's going to feel sorry. And they go, oh, we might lose Bob. So it's like they're going it, to... It's a ploy in my mind. I was never so insulted in my entire life. This is not a ploy. This is for real. I was offered a part-time job on the closing shift yet. Closing shift. I mean, you know, I'd have to go and work there, what, at midnight, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning? Oh, my. Part-time gig at McDonald's. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll go along with this, though, myself. It's like, hey, you know, I run a small catering business. Yeah. And uh, I'll offer you 50 cents more an hour over whatever they offer. You know, and, and it's, I'll... Like... <laughs> <clears throat> Fifty fifty cents more an hour? Yeah, I mean, well, over in course of a whole shift, you know, multiply that out over a month, and then it... it's a deal. When can I start? <laughs> no, just come down anytime. I'll be there. I'll give you my address off the air. But... Right after the show, I will be there. Fifty cents an hour more. You have bought me. Okay, but uh, also have seriously. They're guy... on line one, though. I tell you, this this Becky Pete. Uh... Uh, was it Paul? No. Becky, Pete, uh, who was it? Paul? Yeah, because it was, yeah, it was Paul. Uh, triangle seems to be getting more and more complicated as we go along. Bob in Tampa. Hi, Robert. You're on the air at WFLA. Hello? Bob? Hell, I'm throwing most of them. This is Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, no. Bob was going to tell us that Becky invited him over for berries and cream. 
give him, you know, another second or two just in case. Bob once, Bob twice. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, let me give you the telephone numbers anyway. Because I'm a little bit put out with Santa myself. John in Tampa, hi, you're on the air, WFLA. Hello, Bob. Hi, John. Uh, I bet you he's on his way over to Becky's house right now. You know, you might be right. He probably has call waiting, uh, and, uh, you know, Becky called while the newscast was on, and he, he just split. Well, I tell you, if it doesn't work out, and uh, things don't work out with Paul, uh, you can tell her she can call me, I'll leave you my phone number. Well, you did notice when Becky was on, she wasn't really terribly clear about this baby being Pete's or Paul's, and now, you know, now we know there's a Bob involved, yeah, too. Yeah, there's also an Oriental involved. Uh, well, that's true. I forgot all about that. Lee Wong. That's right. So, I mean... He hung up, too. Maybe the... Whoa, you don't suppose there's a little menage a trois going on this afternoon over there? How about a United Nations affair? But, hey, you know, the way this guy Paul treats her, I don't blame the woman. Uh, this is if, if I was her, this is exactly what I would do. What's that? Well, well, what she's doing, the way Paul treats her. Oh, yeah. Going out into the malls and, you know, looking for fat women. And... Hey, if he likes fat women, uh, he doesn't deserve to have Becky who likes... Strawberries and cream. I mean, Sounded like an angel to me, that woman. She really did. But if, if she She's been become... driven to this by this man. She's been driven to it. It's not her fault. I've got to agree on that. I, I agree totally. Um, the reason I called uh, for first, uh, before we got into this uh, strawberries and cream stuff, mm -hmm. is you were talking about the fat women. Yeah. And I got out of the car, and I was going into the grocery store, and what do you think was walking out as I was walking in? You're kidding two of the biggest porkers you've ever seen in your life. Sleeveless blouses? Sleeveless. I swear to God, you sleeve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, and uh, they had the stains and everything. The only thing, that, the only characteristic that you forgot... Oh, were they coming out of the 9-11 store? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the only thing you forgot was that two-inch bra strap that hangs out the side there. Oh, most of them I used to see don't, you know, don't wear bras. Or these must have been a little more respectable then, I guess. Yeah, probably a high-class bimbos. <laughs> and they always wear them sandals that look like their feet are about to explode inside of them. But why won't they? Why won't they buy underwear? You know, on the right size. Why do they insist upon insist upon buying underwear four sizes too small? Maybe so they that they get those marks. Oh. Maybe they're trying to show off their lines. You know. Or maybe you know maybe the underwear is left over from grammar school or something. <laughs> could fit hey, into them. Yeah. How about, how about how about a fat girl joke? Sure. Okay, what what does a fat girl and a moped have in common? I'm in the Vegas. Both are fun to ride till your friends find out. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's the pilot. So I suggested maybe, you know, I found children to be very honest. So I suggested, well, maybe leave the little girls with me for an hour or two, and I'll give them candy, and they can explain the religion. And uh, so the two guys kind of laughed at each other, you know, and they said, well, okay. And they started to walk off my porch. <laughs> He says he's a S-P-U-D, a spud. <laughs> he's working with the Lucky Star Motel. Yeah. And uh, these three people, Paul, Becky, and some Chinese guy, they keep checking in on a weekly basis over there. Paul and, uh, and See, I work there. I clean up the room. Yeah. And what's you know really gross about it is that uh, I'm a sheet of strawberry and whipped cream. Oh, no. And cattle prod. Oh, you're kidding me. I'm serious, Bob. Oh, no. It, it, it frightened me the first time I went in there. Oh. I almost quit. I don't blame you. And I, I don't was just, blame I was flabbergasted. You. God, do you, do you guys have, you know, peak holes in the walls or something? Uh, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, we, um... Uh, what time uh, do you expect them next? Well, let's see, what's today, Thursday? Yeah. Uh, this would be Saturday around 8 o'clock. Uh, at night? Yes, sir. Uh, which room, uh, which number? Uh, uh, it's room 23. In could fact, I, they request that room every time. Could I, uh, I, I know this is a little unusual, you know, on the air and everything, but uh, do you think I might be able to reserve room 24? Sure, you can even have room 22 if you want, Bob. Okay, I'll be... You, know, you put an angle on the camera from both sides. I'll be checking in about 7.30. Oh, okay, Bob. Okay, see you then, Jim. All right, bye, Bob. Thanks. Go on. All right, I love it. Uh, Robin in, uh... Hey, Bob. Oh, what a tangle web we weave when we practice to deceive. What, 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 what do you mean by that, Robin? Well, I'm Pete's wife. Pete's wife? Yeah, and I'm also Becky's best, best friend. Best friend. Oh, my God. But the killer is, is that I've been seeing Paul on that fat bimbo. As a matter of fact, I just finished downing a whole box of Oreo cookies and whipped cream and strawberries. I'm so depressed. Oh, Robin, Robin, Robin. I know. Well, you know, you, your voice sounded to me today. You reminded me of this priest when I was about 
oh, six years old, and, and I just couldn't help but call up and confess. Well, Robin, are, are you one of these plump bimbos? Or? Oh, I'm huge. Oh. Yeah. And you've, um, been, and you've been packing away the, all of these lunches that Becky's been making with love. Oh, for, she's a great cook. For Paul. And oh, they're delicious. Yeah, poor poor Paul. He doesn't get anything, but he says what I give him is good enough. Oh. Oh, Robin, Robin, Robin. This has got to stop, Robin. I know. I, I just can't help myself. It's like, you know, that one Oreo cookie. Once you eat, you got to have another. I mean, can you imagine the example that, that, that you people are setting for the rest of the audience? I know. That's why I had to call and say that I feel remorseful right now. Are, are you going to stop seeing Paul? Well, actually, I, I don't know. That's up to Paul, too. You know, we're going to talk about it later. But what about Pete? He might still be listening. Well, no, Pete doesn't listen. He's, he's a bit daft, you know. Well, he, he already called in. You're kidding. I missed that. Yeah, about an hour ago. What did he say? Well, he was trying to, <clears throat> it, was, um, it was really a, a shameful call. At first, he kind of denied responsibility for the baby. And then later in the call, he more or less accepted it, but said that he wasn't going to uh, be financially responsible for it and, and that he was going to drop her like a hot potato now. Oh, no. Well, see, Pete's Pete misconstrued because, you see, the uh, mailman, our, we, we live not too far from each other, and our mailman, he's this little Chinaman. And he's a real nice guy. I, I see him spending a lot of time with Becky, and I thought I used to spend a lot of time with her, her being my best friend. Yeah. So, well, you know, I just wanted to call and say this and tell you that I'm feeling really bad. Okay, Robin. I, I, I really, I've, I've got to counsel you, Robin, to stop seeing Paul. Try to work out your difficulties with Pete. Well, right now I have to go to the grocery store. I'm out of Oreos. Okay, but, or Robin. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Lord, what a complicated story this is. Bay, where is decency lady when you need her? But, well, what, she, she, she must have me, also, well, she must have also said about her marital status. Oh, she didn't tell me that. I saw a ring on her finger there, though. Because she's married to Pete. <sighs> well, sorry, Pete, but I didn't get it anyway. I got, I got totally smashed. I said, okay, I got a choice here to make. Either just tell her to get lost or slam down about 10 gin and tonics. So I slammed down 10 gin and tonics. Well, man, you should have known Penrod. They've got a double door there, right? <laughs> you should she have was known. outside, Bob. She couldn't go in. Oh, no. Uh, I should have known when she told me to meet her at the Krispy Kreme over there in the Florida State Fair about two years ago. And I went down there to see you. Mm -hmm. WPLP. Right. And I didn't get to see you, but I seen Chris and Mary. Uh-huh. The one you married. And her ass was broad as that goddamn mobile unit you had down there. No, oh, what? Well, what? What? Yeah, yeah, man. You're accusing my wife of having a bird beef? Why is that damn 12-foot unit? And this it other joker right. caught... Hey, let me, let me finish before you cut me off. Let me finish before you cut me off. This other joker was listening, listening to you but with his father a while ago and said he, the heavyset women just laid... And I, uh, Bob, that's all I got to say. But hey, man, stick with it. Ah. I listen to you every damn day. I get pissed off, but I listen to you every damn day. Thanks, Ray. That man said my wife had a broad face. He's got a gorgeous little push. Gorgeous. Ah. Ah. This is a new low. I've been in this business a long time. Never, never before is anyone acute. Ah. And you can call me a commie. You can all kinds of but a broad beam on my wife. What does this man know? I, I, every now and then I switch over to them. I'll tell you, you guys have really got them scared at that station. It seems like they're changing everything over as quick as they can. Do you have any calls? Not that I know of. Well, we're going to phone number that for him, you know. What I'll the tell hell? you, the reason, the reason I turned him on was I heard an advertisement on the uh, David Fowler show that he was going to witness an electrocution today or something. And uh, evidently... He, he couldn't make it. He's, uh, I don't know why. I wish they would have electrocuted him, if anybody, but... Well, I feel sorry for Richard. I'll give out his phone numbers. Uh, let's see. In, uh, <laughs> in uh, Hillsborough County, the number is 224-0057. And the show that David Fowler and Richard Shanks would never miss. Charlie, hi. You're on the air at WFLA. 
Hi, Bob. Hi, Charlie. Cause you'll never guess who's laying next to me. Oh, uh, oh, not, 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 oh, uh, not. What the... uh, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. <sighs> I heard you ask where she was. I just want to let you know she's right here, but she's asleep, Bob. Who? A decency lady. Decency? You got decency lady in the spot? I swear, Bob. I swear. I'm not kidding you. How did you? How did you do that? I don't know, Bob. <laughs> I guess she's not as decent as we thought she was. Passionate? Is, is she a passionate woman? Oh, she's decent, Bob. She's decent. Whoa, <laughs> maybe that's why they call her decency lady, huh? Yes, she's decent in bed. Want me to try to wake her up, Bob? No, 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 no. Sure? No, no, don't, don't, don't wake her, Charlie. Um, um, what should I do, Bob? You, 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 where, did, where, did, where did you pick her up, Charlie? Oh, it's some bar. I don't know where it was. Oh, she drank too? No, Bob, she, was, she wasn't drinking. She was just hanging out. Sitting there drinking sack I guess for she, was, she had a notepad and a pencil, though. I, maybe she was taking notes or something. I don't know. Oh, God. She didn't set off that buzzer every time, did she? Uh, I don't know, Bob. Uh, oh. Oh, Bob, she's, I, I, I gotta go. Oh, I, I can hear. Okay, man. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Oh, decency. Oh, that opens the line. And Becky. Becky, what, what's going on? I'm upset. Upset? Why, Becky? What's the matter? What's the matter? I've started a, an epidemic, it sounds like, on the, tel on, the, on the radio. Well, it certainly has been a hot topic this afternoon. For those of you who weren't around earlier, Becky is married to Paul, has Pete's baby, and her best friend, Debbie, is... Uh, uh, it's, it's Robin, all, Robin. Uh, Robin, 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 excuse Robin. me, Robin, yes, thank My you. My ex-best friend. Oh, not that, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. but it, it was just a minor indiscretion, Becky. And, Don't and hold I, it again. I'd like to clear something up, too. Yeah. You know why Paul likes fat women? No, I, I, I don't. His nickname is Buddha Belly. Buddha Belly? Buddha Belly. Because that's exactly what he has, is a Buddha Belly. Becky, uh, something, uh, something very strange is, is going on here. Um, there's another woman on the phone who says that she is really Paul's wife and that you are, are well, well let, let's see what happens here. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah, it's the right one. Okay, uh, Pam? Yes. Pam, are, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Pam uh, says, told my producer, Becky, that she's really Paul's wife. I, I can't believe this. I, I'm in shock. No, you are not Paul's wife. Uh, listen, I, I'm, in all honesty, I don't listen to your talk show, but someone from Mark does, and they told me, hey, there's this, something's really funny going on. Come listen to this, and I turn on, and I, I am just in total amazement. Well, it's amazing because the real Paul's wife doesn't work. Oh, listen, lady, I have no idea who you are. I have children with this man. Well, so do I. Well, wait a second, Becky. Earlier you said I was Pete's kid. No, Who's Pete? No, you said I oh, made a promise. You said you had a baby for Pete's sake. That's right. She's Pete messing Paula. around with Paul and having Pete's baby. Well, How Pete... do you know we're talking about the same Paul? <sighs> because Your Paul date bimbo? My co-worker happens to know my husband. Wait a second. Maybe I can clear this up. Pam, are you a little bit overweight? Maybe about 15, 20 pounds? Well, I wouldn't say overweight. My God. Well, you know, just about 15, 20 pounds. Uh, yeah. Well, I have a little flab and a little stretch marks. Did you meet him at the mall? At the mall? Yes. Well, we go to the mall frequently. But is that where you met him, at the mall? Oh, I, I'm just... I'm too nervous right now. I can't... I can't believe this. Oh, oh, I want to meet this you Becky. You Paul, you can have him. He's all yours now, honey, okay? Well, I don't understand. And, and he's dating bimbos? What is this? Becky, well, it sounds I'm... like he's got a wife for a bimbo. Listen, honey, I understand you have dull, rusty scissors. That's right. <laughs> we just get together and take care of Paul real quick. Are you going to bring your cattle prod? I don't have one, but I'd certainly like to get my hands on one. Oh, Paul is in trouble. Paul big. dead meat. Oh, man. Does your Paul have a Buddha belly? <laughs> the man leaves a lot to be desired, okay? Taste is not his forte, and apparently he's been spreading himself quite thin. <sighs> he's had social diseases before. Did you know that? Well... <laughs> Uh, uh, what? This, you didn't know that, honey? Oh, huh. This man. Oh, oh God. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, I'm shaking right now. Let's go back to square one. What do you mean, social disease? Yes, he's 
been around, and he's picked things up, and let me tell you, we went through quite a scare. Sounds like he's picked up a lot. Oh, he's picked up more than his fair share, I'll tell you what. Oh, and you have a child with this man? Sounds like he's got my fair share, too. How many children are out there? I mean, come on, let's get these phone calls rolling. Uh, uh, I've got to go. I'm, I'm going to my mother's. Oh, Becky, oh, Becky. Can, can you get a hold? Be give Becky my number. This is just too much. I, I need to talk to this woman. Oh, my God. I think what you, both of you ladies, need to talk to an attorney and possibly even the state's attorney. Well, that, that, we, yeah, yeah, that sounds as well good. well as a good me. physician. As well. I don't know. Paul may not be performing too much when I'm done with him. I don't want to see the man again. He can take his scum. Scum. He is scum. And Robin and whoever else is out in that radio world. Who is Robin? Huh? Who is Robin? Robin's my best friend. She's married to Pete. And there's Pete's nothing the father going of on Becky's between baby. Pete and I. Who is Pete? Becky has a baby. The man named Pete? No, I do not. Are you free? You said earlier that you did, Becky. I did not. I said for Pete's sake. Pete even claimed responsibility for it, but said he wasn't going to support it. Let me tell you this. This man is 10 years older than me. I don't need this crap. I don't need this crap. Well, he's older than me, too. How old are you? Oh, I'm old. 30. Oh, my God. I'm 27. Oh, my he Lord. He is scum. Scum, I'm telling you, he is scum. Well, there's too many other fish out there in the, in the sea. I'm, I'm going to go start shopping myself since he seems to think he can shop all he wants. Well, Becky, judging from some other calls we've had this afternoon, you know, you've been in the marketplace for quite some time yourself. I'm not out in the marketplace. I just can't help it if I have a good body. Ladies, I, I, I'm, I'm oh. really very sorry about this, but I hope you are able to work out your problems uh, and, you know, you might keep us informed in the days and weeks ahead. Listen, Bob. Yeah. If Paul is listening, you better tell him to watch himself if he comes home tonight. Don't come home tonight, Paul. I'm telling you right now. You mean you have a home with him? Yes, I do. In my name, though, of course. He bought it? No, I did. Oh, I just can't wait. I, well, who's, I... whose name is the van in? <sighs> that van he's had for a long time. That's my van. That's your van? That's my van. I drive around in this disgusting little car. Oh, this is terrible. Well, ladies, I, 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 I suggest you get in touch with good attorneys immediately. And well, how, I'm, how I'm really very sorry for all of this. How can I get a hold of you? What's your, What's your name? What's your name, Pam? Yes. Pam. How can I get a hold of you? You can reach me at work. I, I don't really want to give this number out. Well, I'll, I'll put you both on. Line open, UFLA. Bob. Yes, Ralph. Man, I want to help you out. You want to help me out? Yeah. You want to figure out which way I came in, huh? I know, because I listen to you every day, and I love it. But, man, you need to get Miss Congenial back on that damn thing. Miss Congenial? Which, which Miss Congenial? Two weeks ago, you had that lady in the afternoon. You, what, do you, what do you mean, decency lady? The decency, yeah, decency. Well, we've had a report that decency lady is shacked up with one of the callers this I afternoon. Know that. I guess that's, that's why me. you haven't heard from her. That's me. You? Oh, the pain, Rick. That was not nice. WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon. I've got news for you and Debbie and Robin and... Um, oh, no. Yes, and Becky as well. <sighs> They're not the only ones that uh, Paul has been dating. Paul and I have been going out secretly now for over oh, a year. Oh, no! You're kidding me! No, this is the sad truth. In fact, this I'm... Paul sounds like a sex machine! <laughs> In fact, I'm going to have to get off the phone now and tune in uh, John Eastman because I've got to learn how to have Paul's baby. Oh, well, I can understand that, Patrick. All right, we'll okay. talk to you later, Bob. Okay, be good. Oh, dear me. Bob and St. Pete, hi. Oh, Bob and St. Pete is not there either. Bob, you're a miserable, low-life scum that hurts my ear. My ear, man, you're only there for five minutes. Give me a break, huh? 990-9352. And Vanilla, 461, WFLA, Robert. Hello, Robert. <sighs> let me uh, let me explain something uh, to you, good folks. Uh, that that really, it, it, you know, I'm wearing headphones, and it uh, <clears throat> it smarts. It, it really, really smarts, and I really appreciate it if you wouldn't do that. I appreciate it very much. Uh, anytime, uh, sir. Anytime. Anytime, uh, you're welcome. Uh, what what are the hours? Uh, hours. Well, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. A box every day. Just one. There are only six in a box, though. Yes, sir. You think, I, you think I'm going to work from 6 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night for six tasty pies? 
Oh, well, mm. it's only about $3 worth of pies. I mean, I could do that many in an hour. <laughs> well, then we'll pay you a box an hour. How about milk? Uh, and, and milk? Cold. Really cold. It's got to be Real cold. Real cold. Real cold. Damn, that's a tempting offer, man. <laughs> that is really a tempting offer. Well, and you'll have fun here, because across the street, we have a nice Jehovah Witness living there. Yeah? Uh, she's around 200 pounds. No, no, you, you got me mixed up with Paul. I'm not into fat ladies. Are, are you sure? Positive. <laughs> Paul that's into the fat women. Oh, well, well. I don't know that Paul's into tasty pies, though. Well, we, we, we have a good offer here for Paul. And she drinks beer. Yeah. And her husband is 84 years old. Whoa. And she's 36 years old. 84, 36, huh? <laughs> interesting numbers. It is interesting. Is he rich? Uh, no, sir. She married an 84-year-old man that's not rich? Well, she is 200 pounds, you know. I mean, <laughs> those are nice Jehovah Witnesses. They're always in shorts. Uh-huh. And sleeveless blouse. Oh, grief. And they can... I smell her from down the road when she comes over. Oh, there's no <laughs> doubt in my mind about it. <laughs> I'm sure of that. <laughs> So I thank you for the offer. I'll, I'll mull it over uh, tonight uh, with the wife when we're discussing this kind offer from McDonald's for a part-time gig. Uh-huh. You know, you say yours goes till 10 o'clock at night. McDonald's is looking for me to close. Uh, maybe I can take both of them. Yes, sir. You know, I get both Tasty Pies and Big Macs. Yes, sir. Well, as a matter of fact, I wanted to treat you for Halloween with some of those pies injected with some kind of poison. Poison? But, well, that's just a Halloween treat. Oh, it's not like much of a treat to me. <laughs> well, maybe a trick. Yeah, a real trick. <laughs> well, thank you for the offer. Hello? I appreciate it. It's nice talking to you. Take care. Hello, Bob. Uh, hello, Gary. Hello, Bob. Hello, Gary. Can you hear me now, Bob? I can hear you now, Gary. This is Gary. Gary, right. <laughs> in, 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 in the traffic room or in, something. In, in, in traffic, yeah. Gary with good old rock and roll provided by good old Paul G. Golly Wiz Gonzalez himself. Enjoy an evening of fun from the talk of Tampa Bay, 970 WFLA. Ron from Washington, D.C. Hello, Ron. You're on the air. I wanted to call you, Rob, and congratulate you on winning the World Series. And, uh... Oh, oh winning the World Series. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, Rob. Uh, uh, I was uh, calling about the stupidest call uh, of the day. Uh, uh, did you ever hear anything more stupider than... Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, let's uh, uh, increase the defense budget and uh, cut spending everywhere else. But, and, uh, but, 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 Ron, the, the stupid call of the day was supposed to be a legitimate stupid call, not somebody just trying to make a stupid call. Legitimate. You who wrote it, you are always so critical of me, and, uh, well, I just wanted to thank you for the nice article you wrote. That, about. Ron, from Washington. Not only is this not a real stupid call, but this is one of the worst impersonations of the president. I mean, I... It, ah, this is awful. Oh, well. Awful. Hey, at least you can give me an E for effort. You know, maybe you can fool Coles on this, but not me, man. I'm too sharp. Oh, well, Tim Coles, I invited him up to the White House next week. Great, he probably already left. He and Gloria packed the car and split, took the dogs. Well, him and Lucky are going to go out and take a long walk off a short pier. Well, that would be sweet. Well, thanks anyway, Ron, but, you know, I'm sorry, man. I, I just I just can't buy it. Oh, okay, Bob. Thank you, John Lasseter. Bye-bye. Bye there. Ah, oh, brother, give me a... A sleeveless blouse? Yeah, do you wear sleeveless blouses? Yes, I wear sleeveless blouses. And I'm you're, not a, fat. And you're a porker, I'm, I'm right? I'm not fat. I'm solid. Well, it doesn't make any difference if it's solid or flabby. It's still, it's ugly. It is not. Ah, oh, come on. All Everybody these tells stretch me marks and everything. Clothes. How much do you weigh? Over 180. Over 180. Yeah. About how tall are you? Five foot six. Five six, 180. And you walk around in sleeveless blouses and you want me to believe it looks yes, good? Yes, I do. Oh. And I look just as well as the thin people do. Jenna, Jenna, what, 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 what's your favorite color blouse? What? Uh, describe your favorite sleeveless brow blouse to us. Blouse? Yes. Oh, I like red. I like orchid. Orchid? Yeah. That's beautiful. I'll bet you wear stretch pants, too, right? No, I don't wear stretch pants. Oh, come on. You can admit it. No, I don't. I honestly don't. 
definitely don't. Probably wear purple stretch pants, right? With that orchid blouse? Well, maybe white one. White one? Sure. What are you trying to do? Stop traffic? No. You'd be surprised if you see me. Why do you wear sleeveless blouses? I mean, you know what? Because it's too I, hot. I'm a heavy man. I, I at least have the decency to wear, you know, longer sleeves so that people don't have to be I'm exposed not to that. I'm body. Well, I don't want you to be ashamed of it. I just want you to have some consideration. I do. I dress well. Well, why can't you, you know, wear longer sleeves? I do in the cooler weather. In fact, I have a half, a half, um, um, elbow length sleeve on now. Well, why can't you wear them in July? Because it's too damn hot. They go up north for the summer. It's hot up there, too. Not if you go far enough north. Go where? Far enough north. You know, like Canada. Where? Hudson Bay. No. I right. go to New Jersey, and it gets very hot there. Uh, well, thanks anyway, Gina. Okay. Take care.